Oh. Then they said, okay, now it's worth to keep investing in you. So they kept pushing me. New job, new job, new job. Every time new job, new job, new job. Until ultimately, I came back to Malaysia to run a business, uh, aviation business. It's a company we bought from Malaysian Airlines. And this is where my life changed. So I was actually in finance all the way, running businesses. And then suddenly, I came back to Malaysia and I, I realized something very strange. I realized HR people at that time, uh, maybe still now, HR people are actually useless ones. <laughs> I don't know what they are doing, you know, these HR people. And so at that time, I said to myself, and for me, I'm like that one. Every time I got a problem, I must go fix one. So I said, HR people got a problem one. So I said, let me go and fix HR. So I told GE, after running a business, I said, let me be a HR person for GE. They said, cannot, cannot, not so simple one. It's complicated going to HR. I said, what's so complicated? Hire people, this and that. No, it's complicated. So I said, okay, if you really want to be in HR, go and do training first. So they sent me to Croton Mill, which is GE's learning, learning center. You go and run this first. If you can run this, then you can be HR leader. And, and I started to get into learning about how to develop people and really, truly understanding a lot of the experiences that I had, had a lot to do with leadership for the 21st century. So I, I sent this context and finally, I left GE, I went to Johnson & Johnson. I always, I did an experiment in GE. And this is how we come to, to, the, to, the, to the stage of leadernomics and what we do. Um, I did an experiment. I went and hired uh, students from UKM, UPM, uh, USM, uh, all the universities, the local universities uh, in Malaysia. And I put them in a group and I protected them for three, four years. And then I found that after three, four years, they were equal or better to many of the students that studied overseas. No difference at all. Okay? It's just the first two years they, they, they needed to get some experiences to get them up. And then I did another experiment. I went to Sabah, uh, to Sarawak, and in Miri, we did. We, I, caught, I forced all the because the time I head of HR for G, so I can do anything. I, I forced all the G managers to come to 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 KK and later to Miri, and we did a camp for poor kids or underprivileged kids there. And what happened there was very interesting. Is that early 2000 we did this. After that, we found that many of the kids end up doing university. Some of them we hired into G. And in 2005 or 2006, I can't remember, maybe 2006 or so, I went to a wedding of one of the girls who was, went through this camp. And when I went to the kampong, I found that, this in, in Sarawak is a long, one of the longs, I found that it's not just her that changed, it's her family. Because now her brother and her cousin and all this, you know, my sister worked for GE, no, so terror, no. Uh, and the eyes okay, and I'm going to... And, and I saw that there was a big effect that happened by providing leadership development to kids. And so at that time, me and a few G people said, I tell you what, why don't we give free leadership development to kids? Because, if, like what Mokta Dari did to me, if we can do these things to kids all over the country, in 20 years' time, we'll have a lot of leaders that are available. The problem is, nobody understands what leadership is. So we'll talk about this. But, so we said we will do this. So we set up this company, Dynamics, to do this, give free development to youth. But we didn't want to be NGO. We didn't want to beg for money. And so what we did is, we, did, we, we, we set up in a way that uh, we have an arm called Corporate Services that goes and sells our programs. We give leadership development to companies. So we do the Maxis, the Sime Dabis, the mostly, you know, pretty much all the companies out here. We, 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 do, we do things like training and consulting and, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, we have a community arm that we go and provide free leadership development for kids. Because in 15, 20 years time, these kids, and we go to schools also, um, so we go to schools. So let me just give you a, a quick, uh, let me show you a little video um, on, on this, and then we'll talk about, we'll, we'll go into the topic, we want to talk about leadership development in the 21st century. No sound. Uh, sound. <coughs> One second, huh? Leaderonomics is a unique social enterprise with a mission to transform the world through leadership development. Our vision is centered on helping everyone build their leadership capabilities and grow into community leaders that make a difference in the world. Our belief is that leadership will help build better, fairer, more caring societies. We operate in three spheres, corporate services, media, and the community. All three areas work together as a system which complement each other in funding and content creation and all contribute to our core mission to grow people into leaders. In corporate services, we provide world-class corporate leadership services to some of the biggest organizations in Asia Pacific. 
We provide training and development programs, talent acceleration programs, assessment services, and specialized consulting services. All our programs are experiential, action learning based, and long term focused. Our media arm recognizes that a lot of leadership material is text based, but in order to reach society effectively, leadership content must be transmitted through varied means. So we are investing significantly to ensure this material is converted to video, audio, and interactive text to enable leadership material to be accessible to all communities, including the youth. Check out our online TV shows at leaderonomics.com slash TV. Our third sphere is our community arm, which houses our university division that equips undergraduates with leadership, values, and skill sets to have successful transition into the working world and chart a solid career path. Another arm is our youth division, which works passionately with 11 to 21 year olds to build leadership skills in youth and help them realize their potential. Leader on Rick's Youth runs our signature diet with leadership camps during the school holidays, drop zone at Kids at Risk Community Center, and leadership clubs in schools. At Leader on Mix, we are acutely aware that our vision and goals cannot be done alone, but we do know that together, in partnership with leaders, organizations, and people that share the same vision and conviction of solving the problems in the developing world, we can see our vision become a reality. Okay, so um, enough of that. I want to get into what we want to talk about leadership in the 21st century. Um, if, you, if you look at the world, right, is the world really changing? Yes, no? How? How's the world changing? Huh? Communication facilities, email, and the, the, the technology, you know, that's... Is this, if the world is changing, does that mean that other things around it need to change too? Are you sure? Are people changing? Because <laughs> now everybody complains about Gen Y. Gen Y, hi. The road, I know, they don't understand. But interestingly, uh, if I talk to, you know, you talk to those really old, old people, uh, uh, the, you know, 80 year olds. I've I got one guy who's uh, one of our, our, our consultants, one of our leaders who works with us. He's a 70 year old Italian. And he, you know, he always tells me, uh, when I was young, uh, my parents always say, this generation don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and then he says, now it's his turn to say it back to the younger ones, you know. So it seems to be an endless cycle. We always say, oh, yeah, the, your parents always said it to you. Like. <laughs> And, and now you're saying to your kids, and your, your kids will probably go through the same thing. And they will have Jen to know what, uh, complain about Jen to know what. So it seems to be changing, but yet it seems to be the same. Um, but let's talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about um, why is it, uh, and, and this is very interesting, why is it uh, some government departments seem to be better than some others? Why is it some companies are more successful than others? Why is it some individuals, uh, wherever they go, uh, they are successful? And, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, we spent, uh, our team spent a weekend with Idris Jala's team uh, in uh, Penang with Permandu team. And we, we you know, to, 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 to sort of understand how to take Permandu to the next level. And, you know, every time I have conversation with Idris Jala, I always get fascinated. Because this man, you know, when he tells us stories about how he survived Shell in Malaysia, in Sri Lanka, you know, I mean, he told us one story about... Um, in another interview I had with him a couple of, uh, about a year or so ago, he said, you know, in Shell, in Sri Lanka, he was taken hostage by the employees. They want to whack him and kill him because of all the initiatives he was trying to do. But somehow he wrote that. Then he went to London, to Hague, to back to Malaysia, then MAS. And everywhere he goes, he seems to somewhat be able to do well. But why are other people not so successful in that sense? Uh? Because I think if you give him this anything, I'm sure he will start. There will be movement. Uh. There will be movement. And it's the same you'll see with people like Jack Welch, people like, always they seem to be successful. Why? And why are the people not? And then you look at companies, uh, uh, the biggest, the most read newspaper in the world today is not the Star, unfortunately. <laughs> neither is it Brita Haria Rutusa, and neither is it the New York Times. Everyone thinks New York Times is well read. The world's most read newspaper is Huffington Post. You know how many employees Huffington Post got? Guess. New York Times, I tell you, got 1,950 journalists. Not employees, like journalists alone. Huffington Post, the whole company, guess how many people? No, like more than 10. <laughs> About 60 people. How can 60 people company be more powerful than company with 1,950 people? 
And the same thing applies to departments, you know. Why is it some government depart 